So in this video, I'm going to talk about DNN accelerator performance. And I'm going to start out by taking a look at some of the past literature on DNN accelerators and see what's in there. So the first paper I wanted to cover was this one, IRIS, a spatial architecture for energy efficient data flow for convolutional neural networks. And it's a very highly cited paper in this area that came out of uh, MIT and NVIDIA research. And the author's view on neural network accelerator design is summarized in this paragraph where just before this, they discuss different ASIC and FPGA implementations of DNN accelerators. And they say, the challenge in either type of design, ASIC or FPGA, lies in the exact mapping of the CNN data flow to the systolic array, since it has a strong implication on the resulting throughput and energy efficiency. So basically the idea is that uh, the kinds of convolutions you see in uh, deep neural networks map nicely onto systolic arrays, but there's a lot of different ways to do the mapping because, you know, uh, systolic arrays are two-dimensional arrays laid out in silicon, but a convolutional neural network, even if it's unoptimized, has uh, seven layers in the CNN loop nest, or seven for loops in the CNN loop nest. So how you map those loops onto the systolic array uh, is a critical design decision. So here's uh, what I'd say is the most important chart from the paper. It's figure 12, and it's energy consumption of the six data flows and conf layers of, whoops, excuse me, of AlexNet under PE array size of 256, 512, and 1024. D is the same as C, but with energy breakdown in data types. And the energy is normalized to that of what's called row stationary RS, which is the data flow uh, style that they're advocating for, uh, at array size of 256 and batch size of one, the row stationary data flow is 1.4 to 2.5x more energy efficient than other data flows. And the other data flows, they've got row stationary, which they're normalizing to uh, with the batch size of one. And the other data flows that they're advocating for are what they call weight stationary, output stationary, and there's a few different flavors, A, B, and C of output stationary, and no local reuse, which, as you can see from this color chart, uh, is a different kind of data flow where there's actually no need for a register file. And so what they find across the board is that, uh, generally speaking, row stationary is the best data flow. And in their view, as they said on that previous slide, the or it's the best data flow that people have been able to come up with in the literature. And in their view, CNN uh, accelerator design really comes down to the data flow in the systolic array. So for a very different perspective on what matters in CNN accelerator design, you can check out this paper, Interstellar, using halide scheduling language to analyze DNN accelerators. And this was published at ASPLOS in 2020, but if you go on archive, it was pre-published under a different and more aggressive title, uh, DNN data flow choice is overrated. So this is a very different view, and these authors do not think that data flow is very important. And they say, basically they design a system that can generate different DNN data flows, and they say, using the system, we can show that the specific data flow chosen for the accelerator is not critical to achieve good efficiency. Many different data flows yield similar energy efficiency with good performance. However, finding the best blocking and resource allocation is critical. And we achieve a 2.6x energy savings over IRIS, the aforementioned paper, by reducing the size of the local register file. So just to get some terminology straight for this paper, um, they're accelerating, uh, you know, again, convolutional neural networks. So the conv layer has seven, <coughs> excuse me, seven uh, loops in the nest if it's unoptimized. And they classify the different data flow schemes um, using this notation of uh, basically one loop name and then bar and then another loop name. And this is the loop nests that are unrolled onto the systolic array. So output stationary in their taxonomy means uh, the X and Y loops, these two loops, are unrolled onto the systolic array. Weight stationary means FX and FY, the filter, uh, four loops are unrolled onto the systolic array, so they're spatially uh, allocated and stationary. Row stationary is F, Y, and Y, so F, Y, and Y, and weight stationary is uh, C and K. And so with this data flow classification, they uh, come up with a design space for different data flows, and uh, here's a figure where they basically show uh, each row is a different layer, so con3 from AlexNet, and this row is 4C3R from GoogleNet, and then the, batch, the columns are batch sizes. This is batch size 1, batch size 16. And then these uh, colored dots represent uh, different memory uh, hierarchy sizes, so 64-byte register file, 512-byte uh, register file, and a 512-byte register file uh, plus a uh, global buffer. 
And what you can see here is that for any given color, so for any given memory hierarchy setup, on the x-axis we have different data flows, and on the y-axis we have the energy per op and picojoules. So for example, this row is uh, fx and fy are on the systolic array, this is uh, row stationary, um, you know, output stationary if I'm remembering correctly, and so on. And what you can see is that really across many different data flows for a given setup of the memory hierarchy, um, the data, the energy cost per operation is really extremely similar. So, uh, you know, there's some variation. This guy's a little worse than this guy, and this guy's a little worse than this guy. But overall, the different data flows are very, very close in their energy efficiency. And that's really the punchline from this paper. And they go on to talk about how blocking is really a more important um, contributor to energy efficiency, which makes some sense since the applications are compute bound. So, uh, you know, how you bring data onto the chip and, uh, you know, store data for reuse in the memory hierarchy might uh, make a big difference. But what they notice actually, when I read the fine print of the paper, I thought maybe instead of calling it DNN accelerator design is overrated, they could have called it, or DNN data flow design is overrated, they could have called it DNN accelerator design is overrated. Because they mentioned that instead of data flow choices, figure 10 shows the design space of loop blocking for AlexNet Con 3 using a 512 byte register file corresponding to the blue configuration in figure 8a. So we just looked at that figure, it's the top left. The energy variance of different blocking schemes is much more significant than that of data flow, and only 30% of the schemes fall within 1.25x of the minimum energy. This indicates that loop blocking has a large impact on energy efficiency. Um, and what you see here in figure 10, which is uh, the figure that they're referring to, that basically shows a huge number of different blocking schemes using the same data flow and same register file size, um, is a histogram of the energy efficiency of the blocking scheme and the number of blocking schemes that achieve that energy efficiency. So the most common was 1.5, and the lowest looks to be around 1.3-ish, um, you know, maybe 1.2 or something. And uh, Really, what they say is that 30% of the schemes, which were selected by a pretty naive sampling, fall within 1.25x of the minimum energy, which to me is saying that really a very high percentage of schemes that look even remotely reasonable get pretty close to being optimal. And so maybe the takeaway from this paper is actually that getting to within peak, you know, getting to somewhere close to peak performance in a DNN accelerator is actually just pretty easy in general if you have some idea of what you're doing. So I thought those were both pretty interesting papers that give different perspectives on uh, what really matters in DNN accelerator design. Hopefully you thought they were interesting too, and I'll see you guys in the next video.